thank you, Rafia. <clears throat> you know, two weeks ago, uh, we were uh, near Mount Everest region in Nepal. And um, it had been a couple of decades since I'd been up there. And I was shocked to see just how much Nepal's uh, longest glacier has receded and shrunk. Um, there are now lakes uh, two kilometers long where maps from 30 years ago uh, used to show just ice. And just now um, I'm speaking from uh, far Western Nepal. I'm in fact very close to where Vandana is right now, um, just across the border. And um, this is the um, area bordering Uttarakhand state uh, in India and um, um, where, uh, as Vandana was mentioning, there was been this uh, really freak post-monsoon um, uh, rains. Um, the the Nepal-India border region has been ravaged by, by these floods. Um, there was, in some places, up to 500 millimeters of rain in 24 hours. Uh, the Mahakali River, which forms the border between India and Nepal here, uh, near where I'm sitting right now, is, um, you know, had the highest ever recorded um, water flow ever. Now, obviously, this is a climate emergency, and it's happening already. It's in front of our eyes. We're witnessing it as we speak. Uh, but as was mentioned earlier, this the climate crisis is also a water crisis. There's either too much of it, uh, like we saw uh, just two weeks ago here, or too little. Uh, and, you know, snow and ice uh, get all the attention. <laughs> um, but groundwater, river water, rainwater, what they call sky rivers, these are not mentioned much uh, in the climate discourse in the international press. But it is the water that is the vital issue that's touching us already, either you know, the scarcity of it or too much of it. Um, this winter, um, most of the Himalaya in um, northern India, Pakistan, as well as Nepal, we had a six month drought. And when spring finally arrived, uh, there was these catastrophic wildfires that we have never seen before in Nepal, right across the country nationwide fires, uh, you know, the sky went dark with the smoke from it. Um, and, and it went on for weeks and weeks. And then when the monsoon arrived, uh, it arrived with a bang. Uh, this year it arrived even before schedule and it kept on even after the, the official closing date of the monsoon uh, causing these major floods. <clears throat> I don't think we need proof anymore that this is a climate emergency. In fact, as was mentioned before, the media should now move beyond adaptation and mitigation and the discourse on that to loss and damage, which is hopefully going to be the issue in Glasgow. Um, and actually we should have been reporting on mitigation and adaptation in a big way 30 years ago. It is because possibly because we didn't raise enough, of, uh, enough hell that uh, you know, we're all acting so late. So in the short term, uh, we have all these dangers of glacial lake outburst floods, of which there's one or two every year uh, in Nepal and across the Himalaya. Uh, there are weather extremes, there are springs going dry, forcing people to migrate. But in the longer term, you have, again, the water issue, which is the impact on 1.2 billion people living downstream from us from the Tibetan Plateau and Nepal and the Indukush. Um, this, this goes beyond South Asia. It is not just India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, and Pakistan. It is Burma, the, the you know, Southeast Asia through the Mekong. It's China, the major rivers in China start in Eastern Tibet. Um, and what we have to remember, I think, is that only 9% of the annual flow of the Ganga in India is from snow melt. The rest of it is just rainfall. Uh, and I think the Indus is slightly higher at uh, about um, 16%. The problem is that even though this is a very low figure, the, it is the snow melt that keeps these rivers flowing in the dry season. And uh, that's why it becomes so critical. And the melting of the permanent ice and the glaciers in the Himalaya is going to have a major impact. Um, you know, simulations have shown that the rivers 
will rise in the spring uh, for the next 20, 30 years. And after that, there'll be almost no um, spring melt um, uh, coming down in the dry season. And that's going to be catastrophic. So this is a global and transborder problem. And yet all our plans, all our infrastructure, all our issues, all our responses are national in nature. They're bound by our borders. And I was mentioned, as was mentioned previously, you know, river basins are transboundary by, by definition. Um, and so the crux of it is to ensure that there is equitable water supply for household use and for irrigation. The answer to adapting to climate change in the Himalaya is going to be ensuring there is enough water when it's needed uh, for agriculture and for household use. And this is the lowest hanging fruit you can do, uh, you, can, you can provide to the public uh, in terms of uh, being able to adapt. And of course, you have to take care of it when there's too much water as well. The trouble is that the, the competition for water in the decades to come is also going to be a strategic issue. So this makes the Himalayan region a hotspot in more ways than one. It's a hotspot both from the climate as well as the, as the political standpoint. And there's no other way to do this but to collaborate, cooperate uh, on interbasin um, uh, management of water issues. Thank you very much.